Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss lead code problem of the day and today's problem is maximum profit in job scheduling and it is a hard level problem. So I, I believe like uh, it says it is hard, but it is not that hard actually. Now when you uh, look at this problem job scheduling, you might relate it to a similar problem called activity selection in which we have been given the start and end times of certain activities and we have to find out what is the maximum number of activities that we can uh, like uh, complete without overlapping times. Similar to that, in this particular case, we have been given the profit associated with each of these activities. But now we have to find out the maximum profit that we can have and the activities or the jobs should be non-overlapping. Like the non-overlapping condition is same, but the thing here, what we want to maximize here is the profit, right? So that is a greedy problem and this one is going to be a DP problem. Let us understand how we can solve this particular problem with DP. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a DP array. So let's say I have my DP array and my DP is going to be a single dimensional array. My current state I is going to denote what is the maximum profit I can make if I start from position I, right? This is the only thing I want to store in my DP array. What is the maximum profit I, uh, that's, what is the maximum profit that I can make if I start from position I, right? The second thing what I'm going to do here is, and uh, before talking about that, let us define some base cases. What happens when I is equal to N, the maximum profit I can make is zero, simply zero, because if I have exhausted all the activities, there will be no profit left. And my answer is going to be stored in, answer is going to be stored in DP of zero. Why? Because according to this condition, it is going to be the maximum profit that if I start from position I and when I have all the elements, my answer should be in DP of zero because I am starting from position zero, right? This is all about the DP states. Now let us talk about how are we actually going to solve this problem. Let's assume we have the starting times. So let me just take some examples. So let us take this example only. Right. So here we have, here we have the starting and the ending time. The starting times are 1, 2, 1, 2, 3 and 3 and the ending times are 3, 4 and uh, 5 and 6. Right. So these are the starting and the ending times of these activities. Now I wanted to sort the starting time. You will understand in a while why and uh, they are already sorted in this particular case. So at each position, let's say you have a knapsack kind of a problem where you can decide to take or no, not take the current uh, job or activity, right? So if you decide to not take the current activity, you can simply move on to the next activity that is DP of I plus one. If you decide to take the current activity, you will definitely get the profit from the current activity I, but now you have a constraint on the next activity that we can choose, right? So we know that we can only start a new activity when we have ended the current activity. In this particular example or in this particular problem, we are allowed to end the activity and start the next activity at the same time. That means if I choose this particular first activity, so let me just take this. So if I choose this particular activity, then I can start this activity as well. This is ending at three and this is starting at three. This is allowed that after this particular activity, I directly take this particular activity. This is allowed in this particular problem. So what I need to do is I have, if I take this particular activity I, I have, I know what is the ending time of this particular activity. I need to find some activity which has the starting time greater than or equals to this particular ending time, right? So what better approach can be when we want to find something in a sorted array, right? So this is why I said we are going to start the array according to the start times of these activities. Now you must be understanding why we needed to sort it. If we sort these activities according to the starting time, now we can simply apply binary search to find any value greater than or equal to this particular ending time in the starting time of all the activities, right? So that basically means if I take this particular activity, now I can directly go to this particular activity. I cannot take this particular activity because this starting time is less than this particular ending time. But I can move on to the next activity, which is this one, in which the starting time is greater than or equal to this particular ending time, right? So to find this particular activity, which is helpful or which I can take next is going to be the task of binary research. 
So basically, if I decide to take this particular activity, I need to perform binary research to find out which is the next activity that I can take. Once I know that I have performed binary research and I know what is the, what can be the starting index, let's say that starting index is P, I am going to add DP of P, right? So I have taken the current profit and since I can start from position P now, I'm just going to add DP of P and it is going to give me all the profit that I can make starting from position P, right? So now let's say, now let us discuss how we can solve this. I'm just going to write the pseudo code or the recursive code of this particular problem. So what are we essentially going to do? First of all is if I is equal to is equal to n, that means I write the base case. If all the activities have been exhausted, the answer will be zero. Otherwise, if dp of i is not equal to minus one, that means this particular area has already been computed. I'm just going to return dp of i. Otherwise, I will make int take comma no take and no take is simply going to be helper of i plus one. But if I decide to take this particular value, then what I'm going to do is let's say int p is equals to p is equals to some binary search logic. Like, right, we'll define this logic uh, when we have a look at the final code. But let's say there is some binary search logic here and p is going to help me find the first position in which the starting time of that particular activity is greater than or equal to the ending time of my current activity. Right. Once I figure out this, my take is going to be profit of the current activity i plus helper of p. Right. Because now I can start from position p. Now I am going to set return my dp of i as maximum of take comma no take as simple as it is. Right. So this was all about this particular problem and this is all you had to do. Right. Now before doing anything, you need to make sure that this, these starting times are sorted. Right. So these starting times should be sorted in increasing order and accordingly you need to make sure that these ending times are correctly associated with the starting times right because here in this particular problem you see that they are given as separate arrays the starting time is given as separate ending time is given as separate and the profit is also given as separately right so you need to make sure that you are correctly uh, sorting them and all the same values are together right so this one should always remain with this particular 3 and with this particular 50 Right, I'll sh show you in my code how I have tried to do it, do this particular thing. So here what I've done is I've created a class called job, right. So I have tried to combine all of those three information into one single unit, right. For that I've created a job and it will have three values, start time, end time and profit associated with it. Now I have a constructor for the job in which it is basically going to initialize all the values, right. So first of all, I've initialized the value of n, which is profit dot size. I've created a vector of jobs whose data type is going to be one unit of job and when I, I'm just going to through I'm just going through all the values and I'm creating a new job right so basically this in this particular part I'm going to call the constructor of this particular class called job and I'm going to push this unit into my jobs vector so the benefit of this particular approach was now I have all the information combined into this one single vector called jobs right and now I'm going to sort this particular vector of jobs according to the start times you see I've implemented a custom comparator here and it will run a dot start is less than b dot start. So basically all the values are going to be sorted according to the start times, right? Now I've created a dp array of size n plus one, which is initialized with zero. And you can ignore this for loop for now. Just have a look at this particular uh, like uh, middle part. So I have initialized two values, take and no take. I have initialized to it, no take with dp of i plus one, because if I do not decide to take the current value, I can definitely move on to the next position. Now I have initialized two values, low and high. So you see why I'm doing this. Uh, I had two options here. One was to implement this particular part with the inbuilt lower bound. And in that particular case, I had to, I, I will have to use a custom comparator because now I'm using this particular data type job, right? So inbuilt C++ will not know how to sort or how to perform binary search on this particular data type of this particular vector, right? So uh, one way is to pass a custom comparator to the lower bound function. The other way is to implement binary search yourself. So I implemented binary search myself here. I have initialized two variables low and high. So low is going to denote a position which is never going to be the true, which is never going to be true. And high is going to denote a position which is always going to be true, right? So in this particular case, I'm trying to find out a position whose start time is greater than or equal to the end time of my current job, right? So I for position I, it is this condition is never going to get satisfied because as you can see, the start time of I is always less than end time of I, right? So they're not on, never going to match. So I have initialized low with i. Now high is with, with equals to n because if there is no job which satisfies this particular condition, then 
I can directly move on to position N. That means I have completed all the jobs, right? So this is why this particular condition will always be satisfied at position N. So I am trying to maintain an invariance where low is always false and high is always true, right? You will see how it benefits us in a while. Now I simply go Y, I simply create a while loop while low is less than high minus one and I'm creating a mid value, right? So if jobs of mid dot start is greater than equals to jobs of i dot n, that means this particular con uh, job at position mid is satisfying my condition, the, then I set my high is equals to mid. Because this particular position is satisfying my condition, that is why I set my high is equals to mid. And I always knew high is always going to be true, right? So you see how it is relating right now. And if it does not satisfy, then I can simply set my low is equals to mid because I always knew that low is always false, right? Now, at the end, after I have done binary search, I know that high is always going to store my correct position or the first position in which the starting time of that particular job is greater than equal to the ending time of my current job. So, I mark my take as jobs of i profit plus dp of high and dp of i will be max of take comma no take and at the end I can just return dp of zero, right? So, this was all about this particular problem. Let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and the solution is absolutely correct. So, you see it passes all the test cases. And the solution is correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys said, then consider dropping a like on this video. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and let you be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Tell the next video drops. Keep coding. Stay safe. Bye bye.